Good morning and welcome back to the entrance of thy words here at Bible Baptist Church. I'm Pastor David Jeffers. I do hope you've been enjoying some of this. I want to try to give you some information to try to encourage you, give you food for thought. Always, always want to strengthen your confidence and your faith in the words of God. Um, this, this is the kiss of God on our lost souls. This is bread from heaven. Uh, this book is what uh, initially told us the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, uh, the one that shed his blood so that we could have eternal life. Last time we got into uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is important. Reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. And what the, the, the purpose is that the man of God may be truly furnished. Okay, perfect, truly furnished. Um, and we talked a little bit about uh, inspiration. Okay, do you actually have the scriptures? Do you have a book that's not just a reliable translation, but something that God has inspired for you? And, and we, we came to the realization biblically, we used Bible verses. You see what I'm doing to you. I'm, this, is, this is not one of those things where I tell you, well, I think this and the Baptist position is this. We're not trying to do that. I want to show you what the Word of God says because you can trust it. You can't trust me. You can't trust any other preacher. You can't trust your family. You can't trust your church. I don't care. We all make mistakes. You can trust this book. And this book said in 2 Timothy 3 that Timothy had the scriptures, but we all know he had copies. This book said that Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch had the scriptures. They had the scriptures in that copy of Isaiah that they had. And it also said that the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 had the scriptures. In fact, it said that they did something that was very noble and that we should be doing. They searched the scriptures daily, but they had copies, okay? Now, come to Job chapter 32, and I want to read verses 7 and 8, and it's going to give you a little bit of information about these copies and the fact that the copies that we have can be inspired or given by inspiration. Well, what does that mean, inspiration? Well, when you look up that word and start to look up what God has done there, he gives you a great, great uh, definition. Job 32 verse 7 says, I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom, but... There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So there's, a, there's an inspiration of the Almighty, and he can give that. Well, well, what is that? Come over to Job 33, continuation of the passage, verse 1. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches. This is Elihu continuing to talk. And hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Okay, so that inspiration is God breathing on something, okay? Now you find multiple passages about that. When God breathes on something, it's made alive. You find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when God breathes the breath of life into Adam's nostrils and he becomes a living soul. Um, I think, now the, the folks will disagree with me here, but I think in the upper room there in the last part of the book of John, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in and breathes on them, he's starting the church there. Now, I understand Acts chapter 2 is a Pentecost feast. It's a Jewish feast. And, you know, the church is not, and people are not actually saved like we are saved until right around Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch. And then 9, an Asiatic is saved. In Acts chapter 10, there's a Japhethite saved like us. So there's a black man, an Asiatic, and then there in 10, a Japhethite saved. And so then off goes the church. But there is, there is a reason Jesus Christ showed up and breathed on them in the upper room. Because when he breathes on something, it becomes alive. Now, that passage we read last time, all scripture is given by inspiration there in 2 Timothy 3.16. That, uh, that's theopneustia. What is that? It's God breathed. So 
when he says given by inspiration, you don't have to know that. You don't have to know that. All you have to do is have a King James Bible and go back to Job 32 and 33 and say, oh, well, there's inspiration of the Almighty. Well, what does he do here? Well, it says the Spirit of God made me and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. So he defines it for you. <clears throat> We've said this over and over again. You do not have to know Greek and Hebrew to know God because God has inspired and preserved a book for you in your own language so that you can know him. He gives you the definitions you need, okay? So, Job 32, Job 33 gives you that definition. I want you to come over to 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, and I want to read verse 23 for you here. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible what by? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word of God itself had a part in your new birth if you're saved. If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you don't know God through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to be saved because there's a devil's hell waiting on you at the end of this life if you continue in your lost and dying state. But if you will be saved, this book has a part in that. You say, well, the preacher so-and-so told me about the gospel. Yeah, but preacher so-and-so got it from this book. You say, no, preacher so-and-so heard it from this other preacher. Yeah, but that preacher got it from this book. This passage in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 tells us that this book, this Word of God, is alive and it abides forever. So God has breathed on this book and made it alive. You say, well, I think God breathed on the NIV. Um, you mean the book that um, said that uh, uh, Saul's uh, or actually to see a Saul's wife or Jonathan's mother or, or Jonathan himself was an SOB? Ah, that's, that's tough. You mean, you mean the book that said in Daniel chapter 3, verse 25, that Jesus Christ is a son of the gods with a little S and a little G? That, you mean that book? You think that book's alive? Now listen, I think people can get saved from an NIV. And I think they can grow a little. But reading an NIV is sort of like shaving with a banana. It won't cut like this sword will. There's, there's a lot of problems with those books because they come from the wrong places. This book, this book is, and we'll get into this, but this book comes from a text of other saved Bible-believing people who believe the book and, and recorded things. Those other books come from Alexandria, Egypt, or Rome. And Egypt is a type of the world, and Rome is a religion that has killed, saved, Bible-believing people for a long time. Okay? So you have to be careful with that now. You have to be careful with that. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37, and we're done. When God breathes on something, it's alive. Ezekiel 37, one of the hand of the Lord was on, upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Caused me to pass round about, so forth and so on. And then you get to verse uh, 4 and it says, Again he said unto me, the Lord is talking to Ezekiel. He says, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the word of the Lord, or thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath, to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied in verse seven, verse eight says, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Verse 14. 
he says. They come out of the graves, all this different stuff in verses 11 through 13, verse 14. And shall, he said, this is what I'll do. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and shall place you in your own land. That's a promise. God's going to put them in their own land. We know that. That land doesn't belong to any Muslim people. It belongs to the Jewish people. But God says that I, when I breathe on something, my spirit comes in you or in it and it's alive. This book's alive. It abides forever. Are you saved? <clears throat> if you're saved, God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God had a part in breathing breath, this wind, putting this in you and putting His Spirit in you and causing you to live forever. When God breathes on something, it's alive. God's breath is on this King James Bible. It is alive. Hope you've enjoyed this. Good day and God bless you.